Blizzard has managed to one-up themselves once again. As always, it's in the microtransaction department that's been the case for at least a few years now. Because Diablo 4 officially has a microtransaction that is worth more than the game itself. The best part? It's horse armor. In reality, I think it's just a horse mount. But either way, they're following in the footsteps of Bethesda with something horse-related being ridiculous in a video game. And I kind of want to talk more about microtransactions. I want to get into some microtransactions transaction talk because this is just ridiculous so let's just let's just go and do that right now i try not to play blizzard games anymore because i like feeling like a decent human being from time to time not always but most of the time there was a time where daddy did love him some blizzard games like overwatch 1 instead of playing overwatch 2 i actually found some old unused overwatch 1 videos blizzard and activision at one point decided to join forces and create the microtransaction empire and ever since they've been the goats of ripping people off and seemingly getting away with it every single time. Say what you will about Overwatch 2, but if they would have just stayed with Overwatch 1, I don't think we would have seen the trajectory that that went on, but without my guy Jeff Kaplan, that would have been impossible. He was basically the glue holding the Overwatch franchise together. Now that he's gone, it's just kind of an afterthought. I think they even dissolved the entire esports league or whatever, or they paid them all off to like quit something like a million dollars a team which in competitive team-based hero shooters your esports community is kind of important maybe just a tad just like many people i was once absolutely obsessed with overwatch hell battleborn had to die for overwatch to live then this happened i mean this all just fell apart and it is single-handedly blizzard's fault the way they got rid of overwatch and it's simple yet effective microtransaction business, which I think worked really well because you could earn everything that you can get in the loot boxes, except for, I think there was a couple of things you had to like donate to get and everything, like the Mercy uh, pink outfit. So yeah, when Overwatch 2 came out, I managed to play it for six, seven months, had fun with it, made some great YouTube videos and made some great friends, but eventually I got enough of it. I got sick of it and their predatory systems in place and I just couldn't rant about it anymore. The fire was gone and it just felt hopeless. And yeah, it doesn't look like it's gotten any better, so I think I made the right decision to step away from that garbage fire. Not saying the gameplay is bad. The gameplay is great, and I still might play it from time to time. Not to sound too hypocritical, but I will never give them any of my money, okay? You're not getting any schmeckles from me. Fake-ass Jeff Kaplan. I don't know what the new guy's name is or person, but you're, you suck, bitch. There are other games with microtransactions. Hell, you might be shocked to find out that there's a hell, like so many games with microtransactions. It has become the new norm of video games, and that is mostly acceptable in a free-to-play environment. People start to get a little annoyed when it's not free-to-play, when you have to pay the $70 just to get in, or even the $30 to $40 to get in. Then you get hit with the simplest microtransactions that can sometimes cost more than the game, Diablo 4. The most interesting case for microtransactions, in my opinion, would be Fortnite. Because if you asked me two years ago, they had perfected the formula for microtransactions. Not at the beginning. In fact, I think they were one of the first mainstream games to introduce like $20 to $30 skins, which they did get a lot of buzz around that at the time. It was the Raven skin. $20 for a skin at the time seemed absolutely ludicrous. I still knew some people to get it, probably just for their bragging rights, but you know, to each his own. If you want to own that, go for it. I'll stick to the battle pass, I said, even though I kind of hated that when that first came out as well, because why can't we just unlock the stuff inside the game? It's fine, because it was free to play. That's the thing. It was free to play. I'll get the battle pass. It'll take me 500 hours hours of my life and then I'll be done. But then more recently, Epic has decided to become a more prominent member of the evil ring of greedy powerhouses in the gaming industry. They always have been, don't get me wrong. Maybe not in like the years era when they first started, when they were more humble beginnings. I don't remember too many controversies from them then, but they did destroy Rocket League's trading economy, which was absolute horseshit. In a move that was simply to shit on the player base, they took trading out of the game so you could no longer trade any of the things you owned to anyone you could find, even though if you had bought them directly from the store, you couldn't trade them anyways. They had to come from like loot boxes and stuff. They simply did that so you'd be forced to use the store. Now, some players would say, oh, it's fine. I never used the trading system. Hey, good for you. Some of us like the trading system. Some of us had like tournaments and stuff that they would have for the community that they could like win stuff and then we would trade that stuff to them and it was really exciting and fun. Epic doesn't like that. Epic care about only one thing, 
those sweet, sweet greenbacks. Not long after that, they actually decided, hey, this could be a good time for us to shit on the early supporters of Fortnite, because if you're like me, you actually had saved the world when it came out, day one. And you liked it to some extent. It wasn't as good as the BR has become, or you're not even supposed to really call it a BR anymore, right? It's like a metaverse kind of thing now, which, you know, do your own thing. I still find Fortnite to be pretty fun when I'm not buying $5 songs for the Fortnite festival. Three minutes, five bucks for three minutes? Isn't it like a dollar or two to buy them off of Apple? Not that you'd ever use Apple anyways, because like you could just use Spotify or YouTube even. No, what they decided to do was no longer can the early supporters get their daily login rewards, which would sometimes include V-Bucks. Not all the time, but sometimes. Instead, all of that got transitioned to daily missions, so you'd be forced to play the game that no longer gets regular updates, and they pretty much abandoned entirely. But yet th they still want you to play the missions. I don't know. I guess you gotta work for it a little bit somehow. That's the free-to-play side of things. If you're gonna have a price tag on your game, that admission to get in, I think the microtransactions need to be very reasonable or not present at all. Like I said, Overwatch 1 did it perfectly because you could get all that stuff by just playing the game because you already paid to get in. But of course, Overwatch 2 is free and Overwatch 1 has been completely nuked and you can no longer play it. With the help of people like Jeff Kaplan and people that cared about the gamers that were playing their goddamn game, Games. Overwatch 1 was able to make a microtransaction system that kind of made sense, even with loot boxes, which is a whole other thing that you don't see very often unless you're playing those weird-ass gotcha games on your phone, which, you know, Gamba's great. You know, don't get me wrong, Gamba's great! That's fucking sarcasm, obviously. All my old videos where I say I love Gamba, I don't actually love Gamba. I don't have money for Gamba. We don't have money for Gamba! On a more serious note, the best microtransactions are the pay-to-win microtransactions, obviously. They are harder to find, but they do exist. They've even found their way into the big games, the AAA games, like Call of Duty Advanced Warfare had a huge pay-to-win system. That was great. It also involved that gamble we talked about. I personally really liked the gameplay of Advanced Warfare, but I think it was like a year into their life cycle they introduced, well, it might not even been a year, I don't know exactly the timeline there. They introduced their microtransaction system of giving you, like, specific guns that you could buy out of crates that would have better stats and everything, so some people could have the same gun as you, but it'll do more damage, so on and so forth. Very much made it a pay-to-win experience and that was dog shit but there's also been times where microtransactions have sunk entire businesses i mean look at turtle rock studios the last game they did was back for blood we don't need to get into that not what i was expecting for the spiritual successor to left 4 dead 2 not even close we all know the story of Evolve. They introduced it. It was a shallow experience that was dependent on you buying all these different monsters and all these different guns and these things. And you basically got hit with a front load of buy, 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 buy as soon as you started the fucking thing. I bought that shit day one. I returned it in 20 minutes because it was just stupid. I think there was like 200 people playing day one or something. Like we were all forewarned, I think, right? That's at least what it felt like. That's not to say I'm totally against microtransactions. I do think they belong in those free to play games, as long as they're reasonable. I've gone pretty much my whole gaming life dodging those paid game microtransactions, except for one time, Dead by Daylight. Them stupid fucks at Behavior told me that the Stranger Things stuff was going away, so yeah, I bought a dress for Nancy, just for them to come back in a couple years with the same dress, so we can all fall victim to a bit of FOMO once in a while, okay? I wanted my Nancy to have a pretty little pink dress. Now that a weird thing for me to say, but I didn't mean it like that, you know? Uh, but I have dropped a couple of bucks in Fortnite and some other free-to-play games because I don't mind. I've gotten a lot of time out of the game. If I can get like a hundred hours in, I'll drop a couple bucks in it because I want to see the game continue to thrive and continue enjoying my time playing it. And there are so many indie games that just don't include microtransactions and they earn much more respect for that. That's always a talking point. That's always a, hey, this game is great. Plus it doesn't have microtransactions. Nothing like that. You can unlock everything while you play. People love that shit. It's always going to be respectable. But I think at the same time, all of us are used to microtransactions, and I don't think anyone considers them to be the absolute evil of the world. It's only when you get too greedy, only when you hit those blizzard levels is it something that is worth mentioning, because it's out of control, and someone needs to tell them, hey, ding dong, go back to stupid town. We don't want your bullshit. Now, we don't know what kind of impact Diablo 4 has met from the nefarious business dealings that Blizzard has brought to the table here, 
either. Mostly because they don't show any population counts for, like, consoles and everything. I mean, it doesn't look good on Steam. It's never looked good on Steam as far as player count goes, and that's where you'd expect a majority of your Diablo player base to be. But then again, it's also on Battle.net, so we'll never really see those player numbers and all that bullshit. But the reputation is still there, and it will still continue to get shit on by people like me and maybe you. Or maybe you're an avid supporter of microtransactions, especially the ludicrous priced ones. Hey, good for you. We all have to stand for something. Video games are the most profitable business in any media, and they'll continue to be that way. We'll continue to see greater and greater projects from AAA studios occasionally pumping out some really good stuff. More often than not, I think we'll continue to see horse mounts and quadruple a games that are don't seem even close to finished hey i think that actually released today right so try not to be too stingy with your hard-earned money the company's out here making five billion dollars a year they need your help right now times are tough economies are crashing and your mount is ugly you could be riding a vitreous scourge bye might be a wash <laughs> yeah i'm thinking so you don't think genji can save us though do you want me to try my static strat again, buddy? What was the strat again? No, 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 you? No, 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 don't ask, don't ask. I kind of want to know the strat. the strat, Dottie? Yeah. No, 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 Dilly's talking mad shit. Oh, no!